Casey, you grew up in uh, Central Queensland. Um, you bought it. Welcome. So long as that is long as you boarded at St Brendan's, which is a, uh, a well-known uh, school with an exceptional record of producing rugby league stars. Uh, you were courted by a number of the NRL teams and finally chose Easts. Can you describe how it was being gay and playing for Easts? Um, is this on? I think so. Yeah, cool. um, yeah it was um, uh, sort of like Matt, uh, like Matt was saying earlier, it sort of took me a while to like personally accept it and um, you know, I, I'd moved from home, my hometown's got 400 people, so to move from there, you know, from my boarding school um, to here, I was sort of, you know, I was really detached um, from my family, um, you know, therefore my culture, I'm Aboriginal as well. Um, so coming to Sydney and sort of dealing with all that, but also sort of dealing with, um, you know, with my attraction to guys, um, it, it took me a, a good 18 months to sort of accept that. Um, within myself um, and try to figure out how it was going to fit within, um, you know, it was my job. I was contractually obliged to turn up and perform every single day. So um, taking all that into, into context for myself it, it was really hard. Um, and, um, you know, I didn't know what the support networks were. I didn't really have a support network around me. So um, sort of looking around me to sort of see what I can cling on to and who I can trust and, uh, and all that was, you know, was quite difficult. And as it turned out, your flatmate was also in the closet and also gay at the time. Yeah. Did that make it easier, harder? Uh, a bit easier. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, it was it was a bit easier because you know we we um, we know we got to sort of share our experiences and you know we got to um, talk about how um, you know we we weren't going to be found out basically so you know I, I guess we had to just that. yeah pretty much yeah um, you know and it wasn't until like my teammates started saying oh do you think live with him, is, you know, it's, it's a guy's coming over, I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> so um, respect him, but not you. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, man. Oh, God, you think Casey's gay? <laughs> Casey, you mentioned to me in preparation for this uh, panel that you were actually a bully at school. Uh, and I think it's very brave, you often don't get to hear the side of the story from the bully. Um, do you think this was related to issues that you were experiencing regarding your sexuality? Um, yeah, I think so. I, um, I started to sort of realise, I guess, when I was maybe um, sort of 15 and, and 16 when I sort of was coming on the radar of, um, of all the NRL clubs and um, the school that I went to, um, like it was said earlier, was, is a really well-known um, rugby league uh, nursery, I guess, and there's lots of current NRL players that, um, that have gone through there. Um, so, you know, because I was one of the better players that was coming through and I was kind of expected to move, um, move on to a club. I, um, you know, I did everything I can to try and push that um, that part of me, you know, to the very back and not ever have to deal with it. Um, so I had the girlfriend. I, um, I, and I picked on on, on all, all the the kids that um, um, that the gay kids. Yeah. <laughs> that, but you know, and, and it turned out some of them weren't even gay. Um, but there, um, <laughs> but there are there are a couple that um, you know, that I was like, you know, pretty mean to and of. Um, you know, obviously since, um, you know, being able to, to, to come out and do my thing, I've sort of traced them down and I'm friends with them now and, um, you know, they understand that and, um, you know, and, you know their, their response was, isn't that how it goes? Like, you know, the, the big footy player who picks on the gay dude's generally gay, so... Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, 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 but congratulations for owning up to that, you know, I think that's yeah. really important yeah. and um, thank you for, for, for being so honest. Now, how, is that, how has that experience shaped some of the youth work you're doing currently? Um, I think that's that's why I want to be really honest about it because I'm um, I've been working in the community service sector now for about six or seven years and um, and in youth development and I'm, I come across so many young kids that um you know that that are trying to kill themselves because you know because they're gay or lesbian or they don't know you know they're in they're in the wrong body that sort of stuff and um, you know it's not okay and, and you know these sort of kids you know maybe who I was are, are making it so much worse so um, you know just trying to to show them that there is something else and. And I guess in the context of why we're here, talking about the mental health um, issues around that and why they're sort of um, trying to do this to themselves is, um, you know, I, you, you, try, you go back to positives in their life and one, at one point or another sport was one of the positives but this has taken over their life where they don't want to come out and, you know, it's just building and building and they don't want to be here anymore. So I guess that's kind of why I'm doing 
time though, well, that's great, and uh, it's great for the youth of Central Queensland, so thanks for that. Here. Um, I'm just curious, and it's probably more to KC than anyone up here. <laughs> um, to, and it's curious because you heard in, in uh, their Wade Davis say that there's a heap of players who are in the closet. He has them on his phone, but who aren't ready to come out of the closet. And particularly, I think in team sport, that's an issue. What more needs to happen for players to be ready to come out of the closet who are playing professionally, who are playing team sport? But also, do you think Michael Sam's situation moved us forward, or did it bring us back? Um, I, th I think it definitely moved us forward. Um, for, for him, it's obviously very different because um, of the culture of um, you know or his sport in America. Um, but I guess here, the way you know things could be done differently is um, uh, one of the things that I I do remember is when I you know was approached by the club and, and you know was asked about um, about my sexuality and that sort of thing is that they did they did offer support and they did um, uh, you know point me in the direction of the person I could approach, but even now I have the feeling that if I did go to them and say help me, I don't know that they would have really known what to do um, because they may not have had, you know, I don't think they've been in this situation before. So, you know, I think that they could do to sort of assist players coming through um, at whatever level is, you know, is sort of being really aware, um, you know, that there possibly is and that I think there is. Um, but also, um, you know, being able to, 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 to offer them their, um, you know, support with, with really good conviction. Yeah, I think that's a great, it's a great question for the whole panel. Is there anything else I'd like to add in terms of, if I can paraphrase, it's basically what can sports do now? Now that we're aware of the problem, now that there are examples elsewhere, what can sports get out there to do actively to be proactive in this space to make sure that you know, the, the experience for younger athletes is better? Uh, make all of the athletes watch this movie. Like, this movie was so great, I just want to come out again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.